Hello everyone, Dr. Kofi here and welcome to another episode on the Tutor Med channel where everything medicine is simplified. We are still on the QRS complex and its pathologies. In our previous video, we saw how the QRS complex can indicate ventricular hypertrophies. In today's video, we will look at how to identify low voltages and the conditions they indicate. And so let's grab our notepads and quickly get started. Very good. And so to identify low voltage on the ECG, please make sure first that the calibration marker is standard. Remember we said the calibration marker is the rectangular structure that precedes every lead and it's mostly on the left although some ECG machines will put them on the right. Remember we said in one of our previous videos that checking for standardization is a second step after the demography of the patient, right? And so please recall that we said that for a standardized ECG, the calibration marker should be two big boxes or 10 millimeters high and then one big box or 5 millimeters wide. And so let's look at the criteria for a low voltage. We say a patient's ECG has a low voltage when the amplitude of each of the QRS complexes in 1, the standard limb leads, which are leads 1, 2, and 3, when each of them is less than 5 millimeters. This means when you check the QRS complexes in leads 1, 2, and 3, none of them crosses 5 millimeters. Another way to look at this is that when you find the average of the tallest QRS complex in lead 1, 2, and 3, the average will be less than 5 millimeters. To say this in another way, go to lead 1 and find the tallest QRS complex. Do same for lead 2 and lead 3. Now find the average of 3 of them and it will be less than 5 millimeters. Now apart from the standard limb leads, you can also use the precordial leads, which are leads or leads V1 to V6. And the criteria says that we say the patient's ECG has a low voltage when the amplitude of each of the QRS complexes in all these six leads is less than 10 millimeters. And similarly, when the average of the tallest in each of them is less than 10 millimeters. Again, to state this in another way, go to lead one, find the tallest QRS complex, do same for V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. And then when you find the average, it will be less than 10 millimeters. All right, and so let's see an ECG with a typical low voltage. And so this is the ECG from, again, learntheheart.com. Let's acknowledge that. Here, remember we said we begin by examining the calibration marker for standardization. But unfortunately, this strip doesn't have that. But please keep in mind that you need to examine for standardization. And so we begin by examining the standard limb leads, lead 1, 2, and 3. So you see that in lead 1, the amplitude of the QRS complexes there is less than 5 millimeters. It doesn't cover an entire big box. It is the same for lead 2, which is even more prominent. And then same for lead 3. And so using the standard limb lead criteria, this is a low voltage ECG. If you found the average of the QRS complexes in lead 1, 2, and 3, you realize that it is less than 5 millimeters. Now, we check the precordial leads from V1 to V6. Take a look at V1 to V3. You will see that none of the QRS complexes actually occupies two big boxes. That is 10 millimeters. And it is the same for V4, V5, and then V6. And so this fits the low voltage criteria using the precordial leads. And so the average amplitude in lead 1, 2, and 3 will be less than 5 millimeters. And then the average amplitude in leads V1 to V6 will be less than 6, sorry, 10 millimeters. And that is a low voltage 
ECG. Now, one of the most common causes of low voltage ECG is pericardial effusion. In fact, massive or significant pericardial effusion. And so let's see an ECG on that. Now, this picture I got online only showed the rhythm strips V1, V2, and then V5. I expect or I trust you know or you understand why V1, V2, and V5 are the rhythm strips because we have treated these concepts in our previous videos. I only want to point out that the ECG strip I got online couldn't show all the 12 leads. And so let's get to this ECG. Look at V, sorry, look at lead 2. You will see that some QRS complexes are more than 5 millimeters in amplitude, like the first QRS complex, the third, and then the fifth. And then just looking at this might be misleading that this is not a low voltage ECG. Remember that if the ECG has showed the other leads, lead one and then lead three, if we found the average of the tallest QRS complex in lead one and that of lead two and lead three, you will see that overall the average amplitude will be less than five millimeters and that will still qualify this ECG as a low voltage ECG. But for the purposes of the demonstration for significant pericardial effusion, look at the QRS complexes in lead two. You see that a relatively tall QRS complex alternates like the first one alternates with a relatively short one like the second one. And then the sequence continues like that. See the third one, you see that the next that follows is a short QRS complex. Then the fifth one, then the sixth one. And so this alternating amplitudes of the QRS complex is known as electrical alternance. And it is very characteristic of massive or significant pericardial effusion. Very good. Please do not forget to like and share our video and then subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet. Now on this slide, I want to discuss some causes of low voltage ECG and I'll do this using a diagram I got online. Now adequate ventricular contraction gives optimal voltage. This means that if you don't have adequate ventricular contraction, then you would have a low voltage. And so for adequate contraction to happen, we have to satisfy two factors. The first is that there should be nothing around the heart, in the surroundings of the heart to impede myocardial contractility. And the second is that the heart cells themselves, the muscles, should be healthy enough to contract or to generate strong impulses. And so with these principles in mind, it means that low voltage can be caused by impedance impedance because there is something around the heart which is uh, impeding the contractility or problems with generation of adequate contractility because there is a problem with the heart muscles themselves and so what can occur around the heart which can impede the contracting force of a healthy myocardium the problem can be from the pericardium the sac which um, surrounds the heart or it can be from the thoracic cavity structures in the thoracic cavity are occupying volumes more volume than they should and so they are compressing the heart or it could be that there is nothing wrong with the pericardium or structures in the um, thoracic cavity but for some reason the distance between the electrode and then the heart has been increased by either peripheral edema or obesity so let's take some time and then explain some of the pathologies in the pericardium and then the thoracic um, cavity. So in the pericardium, um, a significant pericardial effusion like cardiac tamponade um, can impede the heart's contracting ability. So what happens is that during diastole, the heart takes in a lot of blood and then when that massive amount of blood gets into the heart, it's able to stretch the myocardium and then the stretch gives a recoil which will generate a strong impulse but in 
cardiac tamponade or significant pericardial effusion, the heart is not able to relax and so little blood comes into it and that causes um, low voltage. It is the same mechanism for constrictive pericarditis. There is a pathology in the pericardium, maybe from TB pericarditis, which has constricted the heart and so the heart cannot relax. The same for pneumoperitoneum, which is, sorry, pneumopericardium, which is air in the pericardium. You come to the thoracic cavity, you have pneumothorax, which is air in the pleura, and then pleural effusion. What these pathologies do is that they, they constrict the heart because when the pleural space becomes filled with air or fluid, it compresses other structures including the heart and the heart cannot relax as it should. Then we have pulmonary causes like COPD. Again, there is enough or there is a lot of air in the lung parenchyma and so it hyperinflates the lung and, an, and a hyperinflated lung compresses other structures like the heart and then the heart cannot relax so the same problem or the same mechanism you move to the generation look at the cardiac causes so you have an mi once you have an mi it means that the heart cells have died and then they become replaced by fibrous tissue and so the fibrous tissue cannot do the work as a healthy myocardium and so the fibrous tissue cannot contract like the myocardium would do infiltrative cardiomyopathy you have maybe amyloidosis replacing the heart muscles again they can't contract then well as they should then you have myocarditis you have inflammation of the myocardium they can't contract and then sometimes hypothyroidism and so these are the causes of low voltage ecg and then the explanations i have given thank you for watching and then see you in our next video please do not forget to like and share our video subscribe if you have not done that yet bye